welcome aspirants welcome to the lecture on harmonic oscillator so i'm not going to go in very much detail about harmonic oscillator and its quantum mechanics but in this lecture we are going to discuss that from the canonical ensemble point of view because many questions have been asked from this uh, harmonic oscillator portion so what is uh, i'm not going to discuss that what actually is harmonic oscillator because that will be covered in quantum mechanics in greater detail but all the things that you might require from the statistical point of view, statistical mechanics point of view that i will be covering in this lecture okay so there is so let's begin so we have to consider an independent harmonic oscillator so very briefly if i mention harmonic oscillator is something which oscillates okay and for harmonic oscillator if in order to have oscillations let's say we have spring so your spring so this mass is oscillating so let's say I displace this mass in this direction. If I displace this mass in this direction, in which direction the force is acting on it? The force is acting on it in this direction, opposite. So force, how much force is acting? Minus Kx. So whenever the force is negative of displacement, force is uh, proportional to negative of displacement, those kind of oscillations are coming under, will come under the category of harmonic oscillation. Why harmonic? The word harmonic comes because if you solve this problem, your displacement will be the function of either cos or sine. So your x, your position of this mass will vary with sine or x, cos. And sine and cos are the harmonic functions. That is why these kind of oscillations are known as the harmonic oscillations. Okay. Because the equation that you are getting is force is directly proportional to minus kx. So you can write force as m d square x by d t square equals to minus kx. If you solve this equation, you will get this solution. And the solution is harmonic in nature. That is why oscillation is also harmonic in nature. Okay, good. So now we are considering n such harmonic oscillators. So you have one harmonic oscillator, another, set third, fourth, and fourth. So you have n such kind of mass spring systems you can imagine. Now, these kind of calculations are very important if you want to explain the black body radiations because black body radiation is nothing but the statistical mechanics of the photons, how the photons behave. And it is also very important for theory of lattice vibrations. In black body radiations, what we actually assume is that when a body is emitting the radiations, the atoms inside it are vibrating uh, harmonically. And as a result, they are emitting some frequency. Or the interaction between the light and the matter is happening in such a way that when the light goes and hits the matter, the atoms of the matter start vibrating uh, harmonically. Similarly, in the lattice vibration, so inside the solid, there are vibrations, which are known as phonons. Not photons, but phonons. That is why you can listen through the uh, your materials or your light can pass through the materials. Okay, so your lattice vibrates and each atom is supposed to be connected. The atoms are connected to each other through a spring. So it is modeled in such a way that we can assume that atoms in the uh, material are connected to each other through the springs. So in that calculations also, that this the, what we are going to develop here is also very important. So we will be looking at it to, from the two point of views and both the point of views are important. One is classical harmonic oscillator in which the harmonic oscillator can have any energy. So what is classical harmonic oscillator? And energy can be continuous. Energy is continuous. It can be any value. So in harmonic, in, in classical harmonic oscillator, so we will be covering harmonic oscillator in two subjects. One is waves, oscillations and optics and another is going to be in quantum mechanics. So what we are going to do in waves, oscillation and optics is actually classical harmonic oscillator and in that the energy is given by half spring constant k into a square. So depending upon what the amplitude is, the oscillation, the amplitude of the oscillation and we can choose our amplitude. The more you displace the mass, more will be the amplitude. If you displace more, your amplitude will be more. So based on the amplitude that you are choosing, your energy will be decided according to that. So you can have any energy. Energy values are continuous. You have no restriction over the value of the energy that your oscillator can take. 
and that energy of the oscillator can be written as half k x square. So in classical mechanics, we have done the Lagrangian, and you know that we write everything in in form of generalized coordinates. So x is written in form of q, and t is written in form of p, right? So k, which is spring constant, is nothing but m omega square, because omega is nothing but under root k by m. So very simple way we also I have given you the formula in small oscillations also. If you have k here and mass here, and if this system is oscillating, then the frequency of oscillation will be under root k by m. So from there I can actually say that my k is m omega square. So my Hamiltonian. So in classical mechanics we always define Hamiltonian as our total energy. So Hamiltonian is nothing but half omega square q y square. Q y means I will have n such equations, one equation for each oscillation. So I will have n such equations for one oscillator. The equation will be half m omega square q q i square plus p i square by two m, and I can take any value from one to m. So each for each harmonic oscillator, I will have one equation. Okay. Now I have explained you that how to write the partition function in 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 the in those levels where the energies are discrete. So whenever your energies are discrete, it is very simple that you use the summation and you say, okay, your energy value is 0, 1, 2, 3. And then in that case, you can do the summation. But now my energy is continuous. It can take any value from one fixed value to another fixed value. So 0 to infinity, it can take any value. So how I write my canonical, uh, how I can write my partition. function? Okay. So first of all, the partition, so summation is replaced by integration. Okay, so now we have two variables. One is Q and one is P. So you are Q. So you have two degrees of freedom. First of all, you have to identify that. <clears throat> okay, so let me write note note this down. These rules so that you do not forget this. Okay, uh, let me note this note down this rule for you. It will be very helpful for you actually. Okay, let me explain this. Let the page load. Yes. So let's see. So this is your quantum levels. Quantum levels basically means that discrete energy levels. If you have the discrete energy levels, it basically means you, you are you have the quantum levels. And on the other hand, you have the classical levels. Classical levels means your energy continuous, you have the continuous energy level. Okay, so the very first step in this situation is very simple that you write e is from minus beta e i, which is very simple and your i can take some value. Now here in this, the number one thing is you identify the degrees of freedom. So in your Hamiltonian, there are two parameters, half m omega square q square plus half p square by 2. It means you have two square terms, so your degrees of freedom is two. But your harmonic oscillator is one dimension. Harmonic oscillator is one dimension, but degrees of freedom that okay. it, it is only oscillating along x axis. But if your oscillations is only along x axis, you have two terms which will be square term which will be coming, and so your degree of freedom will be two. So the volume of phase space, sorry, uh, your dimension of phase space, we covered phase space in the classical mechanics. Dimension in phase space is nothing but. Two. So if it is two, so always remember volume of phase space, volume of phase space is given by h raised to power the uh, n. So n is a number of particles. N is a number of particles. And uh, uh, if it is one dimension, h raised to power 2n if it is two dimensional and h raised to power 3n if it is three dimensional. So the volume of phase space is given by h raised to power n 1d, h raised to power 2n in 2d and h raised to power 3d, 3n in 3d. Now how do you write your partition? First you write e raised to power beta e. That will remain as such. Your integration will become replaced by submission. Here you multiply by small volume and divide by volume. So in my case, I am in one dimension harmonic oscillator and I am writing my partition function for just one particle. 
So h raised to power n will become h because particle is one and I am in one dimension. So I will be dividing one by h e raised to power beta. And dv can be written as dq into dp because there are two parameters which is changing. One is q and one is p. So my partition function can be written as here I you can see e raised to power minus beta h beta e e is h dq into dp. And I have to divide by h and this division of h is coming because I have to divide here I have multiplied by volume. So here I have to divide by volume in order to maintain the dimensions. Now my uh, h value I have put here and dq and dp is there and my p and q both can go from minus infinity to plus infinity. Okay, so my x can be anything from equilibrium. Equilibrium is at x equals to zero from minus infinity to infinity. Similarly, my momentum can either be in this direction or in this direction. So it can also be from minus infinity to infinity. Okay, so I'm splitting my uh, q and p terms. So if I split my q and p terms, I get the two integrations. And then I will use my Gaussian integral formula that e raised to the minus alpha square. This is very important. Uh, actually, you have to remember this integral, not only in statistical mechanics, but in quantum mechanics also, this integral plays a very important so integration from minus infinity to infinity e raised to minus alpha x square dx uh, going from minus infinity to infinity will give you the value under root of pi by alpha. Okay. So from that point of view, uh, I will use find this integral. I will find this integral. If you do that, you will get this and this. And ultimately, your partition function will be 1 by beta h cut omega. So this is a partition function for one part. Then comes the partition function for n particles. So you have to raise the power to the n. Okay. That's all. That's my job. Now it's your job. So do all the calculations. So once you know partition function, you can find Helmholtz free energy. I have already given you the formula A equals to minus kT ln Zn. Do that. Then find the chemical potential. Curly A by curly N. So once, so the thermodynamical recipe says that once you know the partition function, the first step that you do is find the Helmholtz free energy. That I have done. Once you know the Helmholtz free energy, you can find chemical potential, you can find pressure, you can find entropy. All these three things you can find and everything you can find out. Okay. So do these calculations and then you can find the average energy. Average energy also the formula is given to you and, and then you can find the specific. I'm not going through the calculation of this because this is your task. You can easily do that. Because I have given you the thermodynamic recipe and my idea is to tell you the guidance and then it's simple mathematics that you can do. I hope yeah, that you can do that. Okay. So it does not mean that you also skip it. Okay. So uh, very honestly, let me tell you my own experience. Uh, before going to the exam, I have done these derivations, I think uh, five, six, seven, seven times. That's how you get good in the physics. There is no alternative to doing the hard work. So you have to do the derivation many times. You have to go through the that steps again and again. Then only you will realize that when the exam pressure is there and you have to repeat that derivation or do the similar kind of derivation in a very limited amount of time, then only you can do it. If you think that only once or twice you will do this derivation and then in the exam you will be able to repeat that, sorry, that is not going to happen. Okay. So the classical calculations is done. The next step is quantum uh, calculations. So I'm, uh, I'm sorry for now that you do not, if you, if you're very new to this concept, that you do not know that what are the energy levels of quantum harmonic oscillator, then uh, there is a problem in that. We will be covering that how, however, but the energy level of quantum harmonic oscillator. So if it is a quantum harmonic oscillator, then quantum harmonic oscillator, quantum word means that energies are discrete. So it cannot take any value. Classical oscillator can take any value of energy, but quantum oscillator can take only fixed values. And those fixed values are half h cut omega, 3 by 2 h cut omega, 5 by 2 h cut omega, and so on. h cut you all know is given by h by 2. And omega is the frequency of the oscillations. So uh, your oscillator can take any of this fixed value. Okay. So now again, we are back to the discrete value. So we will write our partition function as Z1 equals to summation of E raised to minus beta E. And what is changing here? Only N is changing. here. So I put my value here and only my N is changing. 
Now I can split this. So my summation will be in n. Now I can split this exponential. I can split this exponential in beta n h cut omega multiply by minus beta h cut omega by 2. So this minus beta h cut omega by 2, I can take out of the summation, which you can see that. And basically, I have to do the summation of e raised per minus beta n h cut omega. Again, the value of a, the first term, if you put n 0, you will get e raised per 0, which is 1. So your first term is a. So this is a GP series. And the ratio, ratio is e raised per minus beta h cut omega. So difference, uh, the ratio of two terms and number of terms are infinite. So the formula that I will use is a 1 minus r raised per n divided by 1 minus r. If I put all these values, basically you will get this. So this is something which you write. So this is the sum of the series. So you multiply this and you multiply this. So you get your partition function as this. So this is the first one way of writing a partition function. Or you can say this is a one way of writing partition function. Second is that I bring it in the denominator. If I do that, I will get this. And this thing I can make it as sine hyperbola. So you know that e raised per theta plus e raised per minus, sorry, minus e raised per theta by two is sine hyperbolic. So if I multiply divide by two, I will get two sine hyperbolic beta h cut omega by two minus one. So this formula is also important. Sometimes this is used, sometimes this is used. Now for n oscillators, you have to do the n multiplication. So you can use two formulas, either this one or this one. So you will get again get two partition functions. So it is one, you can convert one to other, but you need to know that you have to, you have to be careful that sometimes you have to use this one, sometimes you have to use this one. Then again, Helmholtz free energy. If you use one formula, then your Helmholtz free energy will come out to be this. Again, the same formula for Helmholtz free energy minus KT ln Zn. So A will come out to be this. If you use the second, then you will get this. Then chemical potential, pressure, entropy, S, average energy, all the calculations you have to do by yourself. I'm not going to go through any calculations. And even I have not even done the calculations. I'm just giving you the formulas. So all the formulas that you have to verify that after doing your own calculation, are you getting this? Not just verify, but you have to be very fast in this calculations. First, you, once you do very slowly, then you repeat this. Because in the exam, what happens is they will just ask you what is entropy. And in order to reach entropy, first you have to find the partition function. So one calculation. Second, you have to find the Helmholtz free energy. Second, sorry, free energy. And third, you have to find the entropy. So three calculations you have to do in the exam in three minutes. So make sure that whatever formula here written, I can ask you anything randomly. Not in this sequence, but anything randomly. And then yet you have to reproduce all of these formulas. So that was a very easy lecture. So that's all. But it's not easy for you. It's easy for me because I don't have to go through this calculation. Trust me, this is very painful calculations. If you think that these calculations are going to happen by themselves and it's very easy. No, it's very tough calculations and you have to do the work for it. Okay. So do these calculations, come up to the answers, and then you can come up to your homework problems. Okay. So these are the homework problems. Some of the problems are very beautiful. At least two problems I know that are very difficult ones. So try these out, and I will explain these problems in the doubt class. Okay. So that's all for today's lecture. And in the next lecture, I'm going to cover the um, statistics of the magnetism. And that is going to be a large lecture, almost more than one hour of lecture. So that I am combining the two lectures in one lecture. So that is going to be a larger lecture. So be very careful in that lecture. Okay, that's very important one. And this is also very important. So go slow on these things. Do not try to rush through or complete through the things because these things are going to come in the exam. This is a, one of the most important topics of statistical mechanics. Okay, so that's all for today. I will see you in the next class. I hope that you are enjoying the sessions. Okay. Bye-bye.